recently on the channel, I reviewed a less than authentic Ego battery that I purchased on Timu. So I thought it'd be great to grab one of the less than authentic Ryobi batteries also, and we're gonna test this out. So this is marked as eight amp hours, 18 volts. It looks just like a Ryobi battery, but obviously it's not the name brand one. So we're gonna be testing this out and I'm gonna test the full capacity of this to see if it's actually eight amp hours or not. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. Today we're gonna to be testing out this less than authentic Ryobi battery here. I hate saying the word fake because it's it's gonna work, I'm sure it is, but it's obviously not made by Ryobi. And like I said, I purchased this on Timu. I see the same exact ones on Amazon and honestly, they're about the same price on Amazon. So I'd probably, if I grabbed another one, I'd probably get it from there so I'd have the easier return policy. But it says 18 volts, it says eight amp hours. We're gonna test that out in this video. I mean, build quality wise, it, it looks like it's supposed to. It's probably not as decently built as a true Ryobi. Uh, it does have a battery indicator here, but oddly enough, after a full charge, it's showing one of the lights is out. So I think that's just probably a faulty light in there maybe. But it charged up all the way. Um, I'm gonna say eight amp hours. I'm not sure because this four amp hour here feels about the same weight and about the same size and everything. So I'm gonna be hard pressed to believe that this thing is actually eight amp hours or not. Even at the price I got it at, if it is four amp hours, it's still a good deal. It's still considerably cheaper than buying a brand new one, uh, name brand one. So we'll see. And how I'm gonna be testing it out is I'm gonna be hooking up this Ryobi inverter on it. It handles up to 150 watts. I'm gonna hook up something that draws about 100 watts from it, first of all, just to see if it works. And then I'm gonna put a power meter on it and watch it draw the battery all the way down and see what kind of capacity we get from it. So let me get a couple things set up and I'll be right back. All right, so here I've got my trusty little dipper um, miniature crock pot thing here. I know it draws right around 100 watts when I put it on high. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just hook this up to this little inverter here, plug it in, turn it on, see if it does turn on and doesn't blow anything up. That's obviously a good thing. And I'll just let it run just for a second or two because after that I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this power meter here and it's gonna show me on here how much power this thing has capacity wise. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in here. And there's a power button right up top here. So let me go ahead and plug in the crock pot. Turn on the power, it is green. Of course, I'm not drawing anything yet. So let's go ahead and turn this on low. And it's running. And let me turn it on high. And it seems like it's good to go. Got a little light up here also too on this inverter, that's pretty cool. So it looks like it works. I don't hear anything weird, I don't smell anything weird, I don't see anything weird, so no smoke coming out of it. It seems to be working, so let's go ahead and get this hooked up with the power meter. Alright, so before I go ahead and turn this on, let me explain what I'm going to be looking at here. Now an 18 volt battery that has, as advertised, 8 amp hours of capacity in it would equate out to 144 watt hours. So if you just do the simple math on that, that's 144 watt hours of battery. Now that's the DC battery that's built in here before it goes through any kind of conversion to AC. So you're gonna lose something off of here. And this is gonna actually tell us how many watt hours or how many milliwatt hours is being consumed by the Little Dipper. Now the first thing I'm gonna admit is I don't think we're gonna to get to that 144 because there's gonna be that conversion of course. And the other thing is I'll be happy if we get half of that because I really don't think this is an eight amp hour battery, but we're gonna find out. So let's go ahead and turn on the power inverter. So we've got power going to here. Let me go ahead and reset for my last test here, clear this thing out. And I get these things on Amazon too. They're pretty cheap and for a test like this, they are very much worthwhile. So this is gonna tell me how many watts and it's gonna start that timer up here. So there's low, 69 watts, 91 watts, there's high, and it's actually drawing a little bit more power than it usually draws on other things. So we're looking at 122 watts on this high power here. And you can see the timers clicking up here. And if I go to function and I look at my kilowatt hours, this is what's gonna start counting up. 
So I'm going to let this run. I'm going to switch over to a time-lapse camera and go ahead and record this whole thing out. And once the thing dies out, we'll see where it stopped at. All right, so I've concluded the testing. I ran this battery all the way down using the little dipper going through this power meter. And it was just over 20 minutes. And we registered 44 watt hours on the screen. So when it died, it was 44 watt hours. And that is considerably less than the 144 I think we were supposed to have. So what I wanted to do was I tested up against this guy here. So this is an actual Ryobi 4 amp hour battery here. And it ran to 54 watt hours. So about 20% more capacity than this one. So that would lead me to believe that this is just over 3 amp hours or so. Now we can do a little bit of math and figure that out. So let's go ahead and pull up a calculator real quick. And if you have any questions about how I get any of these numbers, just let me know. But let's start with this 4 amp hour battery here. The official one. And if we look at that, 4 amp hours times 18 volts is going to give us 72 amp hours. So that's what, if everything was perfectly efficient, that's what it should have said. Now obviously it didn't. It said 54 and like I said, that's because that's the DC voltage and DC amperage in here as opposed to the AC after it gets converted through the little inverter here. So how efficient is that inverter? Well, if we just simply do the 54 divided by 72, we see that's about 75% efficient. So that's not horrible. Obviously, if you're going to use this inverter here and you just use the DC, you know, like the USB ports on it, you're going to charge up a lot of cell phones no problem with that inverter. But if you want to cook some chili or some queso, then you're only going to get about two, uh, 20 minutes out of one of these batteries here. So 75% efficient. So if we go and we take our 44 amp hour that we measured here, and we take the 44 and divide it by that 75% efficiency, we'll see that we have likely in theory, 58, let's say 59 watt hours inside the battery here. Now, if we take that 58.66666 and we divide that by the 18 volts, this is going to be three and a quarter, basically, let's just call it three and a quarter amp hours. And that's about what I guessed when, when this one ran for 44 watt hours and this one ran for 54 watt hours. So we are looking at definitely not eight amp hours not even the four amp hours that I guessed it would be just based on the size and the weight, but basically three, let's call it three amp hours. Now for the price you get these things on Amazon and Timu, is it cheaper than a three amp hour battery at Home Depot or Amazon? Yeah, I think it's still cheaper. Is it as good a deal as you think it's going to be if it was really eight amp hours? Uh, the answer is definitely no. I don't know how these companies get away with marking something like this, but I guess they're probably guessing that someone isn't going to get out a uh, little dipper and a watt meter and find out how much is actually in there. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and saw how I test these things out. If you have any questions, by all means, please drop them down in the comments below. I know I threw a lot of numbers and math and stuff out there, and if you need any of that explained further, please ask away. But I do hope you got something out of the video. If you did, I appreciate a thumbs up. Go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. Like I said, I've got all kinds of battery banks, solar generators, inverters, all kinds of different stuff. And then everything else that you can imagine is geeky is on the channel also. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I appreciate you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.